You're watching a segment of The Splash, Greater West Bloomfield's news magazine show. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Jonathan Jackson, and my guest on the show this week is artist and sculptor Devon Cunningham, who's going to have an exhibit on display here in West Bloomfield at Temple Sheer Shalom. Devon, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Thank I'm glad you. to have you on the show today because it's always fun to have people who are, have a background in artistry and uh, painting, and mm -hmm. you have been doing it for many years now. How long have you been uh, you know, involved in the arts? Well, I've been in, I'm 82. <laughs> I started painting when I was about five. Five, according to my grandmother. Wow. So seventy-seven years out. of uh, yeah. yeah of a long <laughs> time. A long time. But, but then, as you grew up, really. yeah, did you get more involved? Like, uh, how did when did you first start noticing your talent that that it took off? Well, uh, my grandmother said, from the time that she can remember, mm -hmm. I always painted or I always, no, I always drew. <laughs> and then later on, when I started school, I learned colors, and uh, then I went on from there, and. Um, you went to Italy, but correct? When I, you were only 12 years old, I believe. I was 12 yeah. years old, yeah. and at um, the uh, museum in Indianapolis, in the John Heron Art Museum in Indianapolis, they used to have contests and things among the great schools and so forth. So I won from my school, George Washington Carver, <laughs> school number 87. I won the scholarship to go to Italy through the John Heron Art Institute Wonderful. to study with yeah. Petrini. So I studied there for a couple of weeks and I came back home and after that I just, just took couldn't off get away. <laughs> I, I just couldn't get away. I was so enthused by yeah. the training that I had over there. Now and when you came back though, I, uh, you know, d during the time you were around it was very difficult, you know, especially for people of different ethnicities and there are race riots and many of those issues. And you, you mentioned to me how, you know, you were felt inspired to to represent more of the African American community, particularly through a ch uh, the church. And can you tell me a little bit more about that? How did that come to be? Well, that came to be, uh, my, I got a call at work one day mm -hmm. from Father Ellis and uh, he told me to get there as quick as I could to the rectory. I got there as quick as I could. My daughter was sitting in there, and he said that she and her girlfriends had led um, her classes, uh, her the class students, out into the field after they raided the library and took all the books out that had <laughs> white Jesuses with blonde hair and blue eyes out, and they burned it. Oh, so he goodness. was very upset. And so if, well, he wasn't upset as me. I was very upset. And so he says, rather than reprimand her like you say you would do, I would like to show you something. So he took me into the church, mm -hmm. showed me, and said, look at the dome. I looked at the dome, 75 feet high, and it had a white Jesus with blonde hair, blue eyes. He said, this is a black community. <laughs> That's not... He yeah. said, when they come in here, they want to see something that looked like them. It looks a little more, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because Jesus is supposed, the, the theory behind that is, Jesus is supposed to be within each of us. Oh, okay. And so yeah, when yeah. you look at a blonde hair and blue eyed Jesus, you don't see yourself. But when you look at a black man, a black Jesus, and you're black, so therefore you see yourself and therefore Jesus was within you. But it goes even further that Jesus is within He's all of right. us. Okay. But we yeah. do want to see something good in our us. image sometimes. So that's how he commissioned me to paint the dome black. And uh, incidentally, the... Uh, uh, that painting all, wound up on the, the New York Times. New York correct? Times yeah. on the front page in 1994. Wow! As, and they picked the four of the best paintings that they considered of Jesus. And on Christmas Day, no less. On uh, Christmas one of Day, your portraits were up portrait there on, on the, the New, front York Times. New York Times on Christmas Day as one of the four that they had chosen to be the best portraits of Jesus. Now, another good thing I, I learned about you is your portraits aren't just, uh, you know, you, you've done many, you know, over the years, and they've even ended up at the Smithsonian, correct? You've right. done uh, portraits of famous figures like Ronald Reagan, and uh, uh, who else have you done before? Barry Gordy's Barry there. Gordy. Oh, Motown, okay. Right, yeah. and um, Bishop uh, Mason, the first black bishop of the evangelical church. Wonderful. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Evangelical uh, Lutheran. And um, Louis Armstrong oh, and yeah. um, classic. Uh, it's um, 
But you've done I many, though. Yeah, many. You know, I can't think of them all right <laughs> We now. couldn't even name them all. That's no. fine. That's fine. Uh, but There's about 17 in the Smithsonian. Okay. But mm -hmm. your work currently, let's talk a little bit currently. You have some artwork coming to Temple Shir Shalom right here in West Bloomfield, mm -hmm. which is great. And it's it's a very interesting theme. It's called Tikkun Alam, which right. means to repair our world. Mm -hmm. And I believe I even have an example right here mm -hmm. uh, that we can show the audience. But um, this right here is one of your paintings that you developed. Right. And can you tell us a little bit about how this came to be? Why did you feel inspired to make this? Uh, it was inspired by uh, a commission that I got from Larry Mongo, who owns the uh, Cafe de Mongo downtown. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, he was so impressed. He's, had, he's been in business for years and years. He saw the city that it is great, and then he saw it go down. And then he saw Dan Gilbert come in and start rebuilding and rebuilding. And so one day he said, you know, the man has rebuilt so much. He is, uh, he's come in and taken things that have been thrown away, rebuilt it, you know, got the city going again. Mm -hmm. So he said, I would like to commission you to pay Dan Gilbert so that I can hang it here as a tribute to his contribution of rebuilding Detroit. So I was telling Ms. Rose Johnson that um, of Sheer Shalom, that was uh, yeah, yeah. doing the painting and yeah. those so forth. So she says, "Why that's uh, that's the Takun Alam." I said, <laughs> "Is what?" She says, "That's Takun Alam." She says, "We believe that uh, you we are each obligated to repair of the world." Mm -hmm. So the Takun Alam came from her uh, after she saw the painting I did of Dan Gilbert repairing this, uh, the uh, bankrupt city. Of and Detroit, she says, yeah, says, yeah. And so she, uh, she improvised and rhapsodized upon the concept of Takun Alam, repairing of the world. So in painting, I started painting a show. I says, there's a lot that's got to be said about what is being done and what need to be done. So as I was painting and the more I got involved in the in the uh, concept of a tikkun alam, the repairing of the world, Wonderful. I tried to extend it that we not only need to repair the world, mm -hmm. I want to do a show called Family Reunion because we need to be repaired in our heart, our souls, and in our minds. So this is a combination of all of not that. only, yeah, a, yeah, not yeah, only just repairing the things of the world, mm -hmm. but the repairing the soul of the world. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, Devon, thank you so much for sharing that with us. This is an unbelievable painting, and it's, it's great to see that this artwork, like I said, is coming to our area here, and it's extraordinary to see, and I can't wait to see all the many other pieces you have to show with us. So. Oh, well, thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Not a problem. Thank you. Once again, everybody, Devon Cunningham, famous artist and sculptor, and his work is going to be, like he said, at Temple Shir Shalom on May 20th from 5 until 8 p.m., and then again on the 21st from 12 until 4. Hope you all can make it and come out and see some really wonderful and extraordinary artwork. Thanks again. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thanks for watching a segment of The Splash. To catch the entire show or other segments, watch us on Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T Channel 99, or look us up online at thesplash.tv and listen to us on WBLD 89.3, the all-new Lakes FM.